Hello everybody and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program, where we are currently a little bit away from our burn time here. Now of course we're going to be performing this maneuver and this will get us our rendezvous with Eve. So that will be wonderful and we are in position for that. We will want to burn this at T minus one minute and three and a half seconds. So that will be just fine. We'll go ahead and warp forward a little bit here and we will burn now. Excellent. This is of course a retrograde burn here and this is going to put us pretty much exactly where we want to be. So let's just go ahead and position here. Of course we're going to try to encapsulate Gilly's orbit here. And that'll be just fine. So our contract is to get science data from space around Gilly, but we are going to hold an orbital station around Eve. We're going to need to, of course, do a breaking burn at this periapsis. So that is magnificent. I'm going to go ahead and physics warp here. I'm going to go on to a stability assist for the time being while we're physics warping. That seems to be better at holding steady. And we've just got a few seconds left here in this burn. Going back to maneuver node. Okay, I'm going to come out of the physics warp now. And let's... Ah, uh, yeah, we were flipping retrograde here. And that'll do the trick. Magnificent. Or rather, we were coming in retrograde to Gilly. We, we were flipping it around to prograde. <laughs> okay, so let's add a maneuver at this periapsis. And we're just going to do... That's a big breaking burn. But we're going to do that. Magnificent. So we'll line up for that. We'll go ahead and physics warp that turn. There we go. And that's going to be a pretty lengthy burn here. So we're going to go ahead 150 days. Yeah... It's going to be a while, but we've got a long time before our solar station and our solar station core, or rather our fuel module and our solar station core, get caught up to each other. So we've got some time there. And then we're going to, of course, need to change our inclination. And once we get our inclination changed, then we'll need to intercept Gilly. But first things first, this burn. So where are we currently? Oh, there's Eve way out there. Magnificent. And we're going to burn this at, let's see here, 59 and a half seconds, I believe, is when we want to burn this. Let's go ahead and warp forward a little bit more here. And we will burn this right about now. Wonderful. And we're going to physics warp this burn. It's going to be a little bit lengthy, but we'll just bring our speed right on down and get ourselves into orbit here. We don't need to be in any particular orbit around Eve, so this orbit will do. This burn will complete this contract. About another 400 meters per second to burn here. In space high over Eve's peaks, sure. For some reason, I was under the impression I was physics warping right now, but uh, that wasn't happening, and I was slightly confused. I was like, hang on a moment, but no, it's it's all good. Okay, so let's get ourselves into orbit here. 70 more meters per second. Beautiful, that'll do. Okay, we'll set Gilly as our target. We'll need to maintain our stability for 10 seconds here. And this contract will complete... There we go. There's that contract done. Next, we're going to need to transmit or recover scientific data from space around Gilly. And that is something that we can definitely do. We're basically at the ascending node right now. So let's flip over to anti-normal. And we'll go ahead and warp. For Actually, I'm not going to warp. I'm going to set up a, a maneuver node. We've got plenty of time for this. So this will bring it on down. Ooh, hello. That's an escape velocity there. Not ideal. That's for sure. We're going to need to toss some retrograde in there. And let's bring this down to about that. That will put us in plane of Gilly. Magnificent. We'll go ahead and warp to that maneuver after aligning to the maneuver node. There we go. About a four hour warp here. 
Wonderful. So this will get us in plane of Gilly. And then we'll just do ourselves... Oh, we should not be uh, stopping time warp when we enter a new biome. <laughs> that should not be happening. Okay, we'll just get ourselves into orbit of Gilly here quite shortly. So T minus three seconds. That is when we want to burn this. And we're going to burn this... Well, I'm going to warp a little further, actually, and we'll burn now. Excellent. And we'll just slow down that burn a little bit. I think I overshot slightly, but uh, 0.2 degrees. I mean, honestly, that's good enough. We could flip it around to the normal node and try to fix it. Yeah, that would work, actually. Let's go ahead and do that. I overshot. That was entirely my own fault. And 0.1 degrees, and there we go. Barely any delta V whatsoever. So let's see what an encounter might look like. Well, that's definitely at the wrong time. This, however, is not. Wonderful. So what's that encounter look like? Maybe a little on the low side. A little on the low side. Let's go ahead and pin open that periapsis marker. And let's just alter this maneuver a tiny, tiny bit. 105? Yeah, I want to be maybe like 20 kilometers. Uh, that's not what I'm looking for. About 20 kilometers. Yes, that will do. So we'll align to that maneuver node. This will be 138.6 meters per second. That's completely fine. The question is, what is this breaking burn going to look like? But we'll take a look at that. And let's move forward about a week. Wonderful. Two more days. And let's do our rendezvous burn at T minus six and a half seconds. So we'll position for that. I kind of overshot. It'd be fine. Okay, let's see how this goes. Uh, we're going to need to burn this a little more heavily here. Four, three, two, one. There we go. Um, let's flip it around to prograde here. I kind of hate this periapsis, <laughs> objectively. <laughs> let's bring this right on around. And let's see here. Actually, no, I don't. I don't hate this. I don't want to bring it back this way. I want to be going this direction. Because that's in plane with the rotation of Gilly. So, a very, very small burn. 25 kilometers, I'm going to call that good. So at this periapsis, how much is it going to cost to break? Not all that much. We just want to circularize here, pretty much. So we're going to bring that in. Something like... this. And I'm having a real hard time getting that perfectly circular. It doesn't need to be, though, in all honesty. So let's just go ahead and align for that. Wonderful. And let's warp to this burn. Another 13 days. That is completely fine, of course. Eight more days here. And where is Gilly right now? Well, that's Eve there. I have no idea where Gilly is. I don't currently see it, but that doesn't mean anything. I'm probably just looking in the wrong place, if I had to guess. Yes, there it is. Hello, Gilly. Okay, so we're going to burn this at T minus 11 and a half seconds. And we'll warp towards that. A little further, actually. Okay, and we'll burn this now. Wonderful. So this will get us in orbit around Gilly. We will also grab our temperature scan here. And we'll transmit that as soon as this burn is done. 80 more meters per second. And 
Did I overshoot? No, I didn't. What is going on here? Oh, okay, that's kind of exciting. <laughs> Let's flip around. That was definitely interesting what happened there, but uh, we'll just get this back to retrograde here and circularize it. About like that, that's good enough. Okay, let's go ahead and call this a completed mining station with the small problem that we don't have docking ports, but I'm, I'm sure it'll be fine. We're going to transmit our data, and that will get our scientific data from space around Gilly. Fantastic. So let's head on back to the space center. And I'm actually going to call that the mining station around Venus done. Like, it's not strictly speaking functional, but it would work mostly. <laughs> there are a few bits that uh, wouldn't exactly work. We'd have to do a refueling mission, but uh, it it'll be fine. So let's hop into the mission control and see what else is available here. Extract ore from Gilly. I mean, that's something that would need to happen, in theory. Plant a flag on Eve. Pass on that. We already did that. <laughs> hmm... Not really a lot of good stuff here. Okay. So we need to do our new orbital station on a solar orbit. That's fine. So let's go ahead and hop to our tracking station and see how long it's going to be until our maneuver node. We should have passed at least one year there. So let's go ahead and check here the fuel module. Ah, uh, three years still on that maneuver node. So that is a while. That is absolutely a while. So what else do we need in our building list? Let's check here. Let me go into the video description. Okay, so I'm calling that the mining station over Eve done. The mining station over Neptune's moon Triton, I still don't know how we're going to give that a stock analog. We need a mining station over Kerbal, which we're working on actively, and a mining station over Jewel, whatever that means. <laughs> okay. As far as the science vessel and the three Corvettes go, I mean, I feel like we've kind of already made our science vessel, and we did make our construction vessel, which we used to construct the base on Minmus. I feel like we've kind of already made our science vessel in the various probes and things like that that we've got around, and our science stations as well. I feel like that will do the trick, and I mean, those are technically stations, but they're also just kind of in orbit with a lot of fuel and engines, and they look a lot like a ship to me. So I'm actually going to call the science vessel done. Corvettes. Corvettes, though. That is not done, I think, objectively. We could maybe make some space planes, like make a space plane model that would essentially function as a Corvette. Now, how would we go about doing that? Well, I'm terrible at making space planes, so this is going to go amazingly well, I'm sure. We're going to probably start with a Mark I cockpit, is my guess. And then beyond that... We're going to want some sort of fuel tank, but I don't want oxidizer necessarily in this. So how would we go about doing that? There's a liquid fuel fuselage here. And then we could do like a... That's a Mark II bicoupler. I would... We could do something like this. And then go to a Mark II bicoupler. Like that. Now, this is all liquid fuel. Oh, this does have oxidizer in this. This is liquid fuel up here. But this only has oxidizer. Well, that's interesting, isn't it? So, we're going to need some sort of an intake. We're going to need some sort of a wing. We're probably going to need a tail fin. And we're going to need weapon systems on this. Now, that's going to get interesting to try to design in KSP, for sure. But uh, I feel like we've got time, so we may as well start doing this. I wouldn't mind plopping a reaction wheel here, just so that we can uh, control in space. 
That's a small reaction wheel there. That's a medium. I want a regular sized one. There we go. Okay, we're definitely going to need some form of landing gear on this. So maybe we could put in, say, something along the lines of a steerable landing gear in the front. So that would go, say, here. And then we would have small landing gears in the back. Maybe they would be positioned, I mean, not at this angle for sure, but we would want to do mirror symmetry and have them be... I don't know, maybe somewhere like here? Like, that angle is objectively awful, right? And they're probably a little on the tall side if we put them there. So maybe we should try positioning them instead there. And then just rotate them down to that angle. Now, I'm going to put this out on the pad. It's not going to work, and we're, we're going to call this Corvette. I'm going to put this out on the pad. It's not going to work. We don't have any engines or anything. But the only goal here is to determine how we're sitting on those wheels. Let's see how that goes. Also, can we put... Are these default in the gear action group? We'll find out. Apparently, we've never been on the runway. This runway is not upgraded. Okay. That's retractable. This is not. Okay, good to know. I did like how it was sitting. We'll go ahead and turn the brakes off. Yeah, this is sitting well. Maybe pointed a little bit nose down, actually. So let's go ahead and revert that back to the space plane hangar. We knew that we weren't ever going to go anywhere, right? So let's bring it on back to here. And I think I want a little bit more height on this steerable landing here. But I also want it to be a little taller. Are these steerable? They're retractable. They're not steerable. Maybe that's okay. So then this would get placed here. Now, I have a feeling this is going to be quite nose up. Uh, they do have steering on them. Okay. So we'd probably want to disable steering on the back ones like that. Now... This is almost certainly going to be extremely, extremely tall for what we're looking for. We could move it up to be perhaps a little bit like that. Perhaps. Let's see how that sits. And also, I'm interested in seeing... We probably want to have our SAS off at the beginning, don't we? But I'm interested in seeing... How we want to, or how, how quick we can start moving with just our wheels here. Okay, so we're going to turn this SAS over to SAS only. And we're going to see if this goes. It's going! It's not going anywhere fast, but it's going. So we're a little bit nose up now, and that is good. That's, I think what we want here is to be slightly nose up. This is not speedy. This is not the fastest mode of transportation we've ever built, but it works. So let's go ahead and revert that back to the space plane hangar. Now, do we want to do something cheap and easy and just go for, like, spacecraft wings? Like, for example, uh, where are they? This is a space plane tail fin. We don't want that. We do want a tail fin, but maybe not that one. Air brakes might not be a terrible idea either. Now, we don't currently have any air intake. And that's definitely something that we should consider. That's a supersonic intake? Huh. Interesting. There's a shock cone intake here as well. Now, we're if, if we just slap jet engines onto this, like, say, hypothetically... That we just slap on, like, the afterburning engines. These guys. Right? No, these are aero spikes, actually. Um, the afterburners. These guys. Say that we just slapped a pair of these on. This isn't going to work, because we need an air intake. So, let's go ahead and look for intake. And there are a few options here. 
There's this radial air intake. That's a big boy. And I'd kind of prefer a smaller one. An adjustable ramp intake? This is more like it. Okay. So we can have these guys, like, somewhere over, say, here. And they'll be our intake. Then, as far as our actual takeoff goes, our, our lift, we are definitely going to need some wings on this. That's for sure. There's the aeroplane main wings. Those are kind of hilariously large. I think that we are maybe going to go for swept wing type A's. This is probably not enough lift, if I had to guess. Well, for one thing, there's that nonsense going on. <laughs> if we were to position it there, I guarantee you this is not enough lift. We'll simulate it, but I'm quite certain. I would also like to put a tail fin on here, and that is this guy. Do we want a single tail fin? I suspect a single tail fin will be enough. Now, to be clear, this is not the plan. <laughs> this is not the plan at all. But uh, let's see how this works. This is a simulation, and when this inevitably crashes or fails to take off, we are not going to be too concerned about that. So, we've got some oxidizer in this, right? And that is not needed, since we've got the air intakes for our fans, for our turbo fans here. Let's go ahead and fire this. This one is intake air deprived. This one is not, so that's not a great sign already. That is indeed not a great sign. And yeah, you can uh, see that that's going to happen. As I said, that was very, very likely to happen. There are a couple of reasons for this, of course. One is that we apparently didn't have enough air intake. So, let's go ahead and duplicate these air intakes down below. And we'll do something along the lines of that. Okay, so we've got additional air intakes, and that should be sufficient air intakes. That will help. Now, another issue is that we don't have any sort of control surfaces on this. That was understood when we started this, but uh, it's slightly problematic to be sure. We can just slot that in there and then rotate it into position in theory, but having swept wings I feel like is probably a mistake here. So let's instead go for something more akin to a structural wing type B, or maybe even a type C. What is the lifting surface of these? This is more lifting surface here. Now, this is probably still not going to be enough, is my, my guess here. In fact, I'm quite certain that that's not going to be enough. So, what do we want to do about that? Well, I kind of want to blow it up again, in all honesty. We can put an Elevon here, and maybe even a second one over here. But I feel like this one would probably be good enough. Let's go ahead and move this over. It appears to be rotated fairly correctly. Actually, let's just see how that goes. I don't think it's going to go tremendously well. Let's see. Is there a smaller one? There is. Something kind of like that. It doesn't look great. It doesn't have to. Let's just see how poorly this goes. <laughs> I'm really bad at planes. Really bad at planes. I'll, I'll probably improve as I work on this, but... This is going to be a bit of a process. As far as actually attaching weapons to the thing, that's going to be complicated. And we'll need to figure out exactly how we want to do that. Okay. We're definitely pulling off to the side here. We can, we can tell that. We're picking up a shimmy. Exciting. <laughs> yep. I'm not shocked by any of that. I'm not shocked at all. Like I said, I'm really bad at this. I'll get there. I will get there. So first thing I want to do is I want to ditch this. And I want to ditch this as well. And I want to ditch this wing. This is going to be kind of trial and error for me as I attempt to figure out exactly what I want to go for here. I mean, we could go for aeroplane main wings. We could go for delta wings. 
Honestly, those might work. In terms of size here. Something like this. That could theoretically do the trick. And then we'd need some Elevons on here, obviously. So I would want them to be probably like Elevon 3s, maybe. Or maybe just good old-fashioned Elevon 1s. So they'd go, not like that, they'd go something along the lines of that. Now, I'm not necessarily okay with this rotation that these Delta Wings have picked up from our fuselage. That's not exactly straight, is it? I was hoping that exactly straight would be an option there. Apparently it is not. Hmm. I wonder if we should maybe try placing it way back here. And that's definitely not straight. We can try to straighten it out a bit, or we can just try to do... Actually, something like that, and then maybe move it inward. What could possibly go wrong? Well, I can tell you what could possibly go wrong. We could go boom again. But that is not anything new. Let's give this a go. And, I mean, this is early development of our Corvette program, right? This is going to take some time. This is going to be a few episodes, at the very least, of designing this thing. Now, one thing I might want to think about doing... ...is checking our flaps here. Okay, what if we didn't gimbal this? We're definitely pulling hard to one side here. And we don't have the lift that we need. That's pretty clear. Now, are we pulling to one side because this is a non-paved runway? Maybe. Well, it's flying. Can't switch to it. <laughs> and it's completely out of control. But, uh, sure. Sure. Well, that's a very early start to this program. We will iron out these bugs. Definitely. For now, though, it is time to put a cut in here. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And next episode, we are going to iron out some of these bugs and see what we can do as far as getting this quote unquote Corvette working. You can leave your offerings to the engagement gods in the form of likes, comments, subscribes and bell ringings. And I will see you all next time.